Hi, good morning all. The Sabres are playing tonight once again, folks, against the Columbus Blue Jackets, where it seemed like all this mess started. Let's take a look at it coming up. Actually, let me rephrase that. Really, the, the mess began in preseason. Really. I mean, the, the, this team has been inconsistent from day one to now. They've just been inconsistent. Uh, sorry, the post game, last game, guys. I, I just couldn't do it. I wasn't in. Uh, I, and the truth is, I don't know if I'll be here tonight. I, I mean, this game, when I looked at it, I said, oh my goodness, it starts at five. I don't even know if I'm going to get to see this game. I'm going to be busy all day today. So we'll, we, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to try. But, uh, you know, one thing, uh, one thing about the Sabres this year, guys, they have not been once five games under 500. Could this be the night or the evening, I should say, that it happens? Because if they lose this game and we don't, you know, the, everybody has their opinion of what's going on, what's wrong with the team. I give them mine. I think we need a coaching change. I'm, I'm sick of saying it, but we do. And um, I don't think we're going to do it. I think I think Granado, his job is safe. <laughs> God, it's just how it feels. And uh, if we lose this, not one coach in this NHL would survive this much that Granado has survived. So that means the problem is Adams. He's doing it again like he did with Kruger. And he's waiting until the season's completely awash before he's going to make any changes. And then there's no pressure on a new coach coming in. But shouldn't there be some pressure if we bring in a new coach, guys? I don't want a coach to walk into a non-pressure situation. I want him to walk in to a kitchen that's on fire and see if he can put it out. This GM is making mistakes now and it's pissing me off. It really is. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this clip, guys. Okay, so there you see uh, down at number eight and nine, there's the two teams that are fighting for the, the rights to be eighth in, in the wild card chase. Uh, if Columbus wins this game, they're actually in front of us with points. We'll, have, we'll be a point behind them with a game in hand. My goodness, how, how, the, uh, how this season has fallen right before our eyes. So if you look, uh, the Sabres are 4-4-2 and two their last 10. Columbus is 4-4-2 in their last 10. Columbus on the road, 4-8-4. Four, and four. I might want to remind you, their last game they won on the road was in Buffalo. Sabres at home, a dismal 7-9-1. The Sabres, goals for and against, a minus 18. Columbus, goals for and against, a minus 20. Very, very similar teams in the standings. One thing that stands out, Sabres have 13 regulation wins, and Columbus have 9. So... The regulation wins are, are not impressive. I mean, the Sabres are like winning one out of every three in regulation, guys. But the reason I'll point out the regulation wins is because if you look at that clip, you'll see the teams that are in a, in a playoff position right now aren't that far in front of us in regulation wins, but the Sabres just continue, guys, to shoot themselves in the foot. They continue to find ways to make the season worse. I don't care about, I don't care where our special teams are at. I just don't care anymore about this stuff, guys. I care about what kind of management do we have? What kind of coaching do we have at this point? The rest of it for me, I'm just leaving it there. It doesn't matter. Really, it does not matter. What matters is, are we going to have survival instincts like a normal franchise would? And make these changes because... Right now, I'm open-minded to Adams and Granato being tossed. I'm open-minded to it right now. I've had enough. And I like the job Gran uh, uh, Granato. I, I like what Granato's done, actually, with the young kids. But as a head coach, he sucks. And then Adams, I love what he's done with, with, with a lot with the, the team. I, I do. Now, some of the signings, questionable, but low-risk signings, guys. I'd rather have four bad signings that are two million bucks each and one terrible signing that's 10 any day.
any day because you're never going to get on. <laughs> you're never going to get rid of the ten million dollar. Like imagine if we had Huberto sign for ten and a half million bucks, like they do over there in Calgary, for the next eight years. Now, can you imagine having that horrible, the worst contract maybe in the history of the NHL? Maybe, maybe. It's it's that bad. Right now, we have some. Yeah, we have some contracts I don't like. You know, I can name at least about eight that I, I don't think should be on this roster, really. And, and Akposo's one of them. There's guys on this roster I don't believe should be on this roster if we are serious about doing anything, guys. Really? You know, and, and, and like, and the thing is, a lot of these contracts can be moved out with a few phone calls. Really, and you know, start start using some of our assets that we have in the mind. Start using some of them to get us out of this hole because this hole is what's going to get Granado fired. It's what's going to get Adams fired because they're not doing enough of it. And this thing about st staying the course, now's not the time. Believe it or not, it's not the time. They they've got to do something to wake up this franchise. This. I don't think Adams realizes that he doesn't have the luxury of another two full seasons of rebuild. There's no time. You've rebuilt the team, Adams. You have the assets. Go and acquire some players and get this team going because we're all tired. <laughs> we're all tired of it. We are. So I think the main thing that I'm going to look for, guys, the rest of the year is are we going to fire this coach? Are we going to pretend he's not the problem or not one of the problems? Because we don't hit for shit, guys. We don't hit. We're wusses. We are the softest goddamn team in the NHL. And we went and acquired hitting and we're still shit at it. So when does it change? When? I, 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 unless you guys want to follow the wuss rules of Gary Batman and say, oh, no, we don't hit no more. That... that you know, hitting's not important. Well, you know what? Go watch ba a ballet or something then because I'm telling you, hockey, part of the game is physical play and grit. And if you don't have it, you don't win titles. You don't do nothing if you want the truth. We're proof of it. You could say what you want if you're one of those fans that likes wuss hockey. But I'll tell you what, enjoy then because this is what you're going to get for the next 10 years if Granado's our coach for the next 10 years. We're not going to do anything without getting tougher. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever. No. There's no playoffs. There's no Stanley Cup run. There's no deep playoff run coming if this team is going to be throwing 8 to 10 hits a game. It's pointless. Mark my words, watch uh, Carolina, perfect example of a nothing happening team that should be doing something. There are a nothing happening team come playoff time. The truth is the Hurricanes suck come playoff time. They do. And they're going to destroy one of their best eras in their history, maybe their best era in their history, because Brenda Moore's too much of an idiot to have his players hitting. That's the only team that I can think of that's softer than the Sabres is, is Carolina. And Carolina were my pick to win the cup a few years ago, but they went like this. Their hitting's gotten worse and worse. Forget it. They're finished. They're done. They're, to me, that's, they're not a threat. People blame their goaltending. No, they got the same problem as us, guys. They're just a more talented team, but they got the same problem as us, where as they leave their goalies out to dry because they're not physical over there. And it's finally caught up to them. What do you think's caught up to the Leafs? The Leafs this year are hitting more. But the truth is the Leafs kind of let their window of opportunity, it feels like, slip by. I think the Leafs are hanging on now just because out of sheer front-loaded talent. And that's only going to last so long anyway. So, guys, we got to do something and we got to do it now. I, I, I don't know how much more I got to stress this. I know I'm due for a video, so I might as well make it a bit of a rant video. We have got to do something, guys. We got to stop blaming the special teams. We got to stop blaming certain players. We got to stop with, we got to look at our system, okay? We got to look at our system. 
Last year we were exciting to watch, but we hit like shit. We were garbage. And of course, we're not going to have success in the long run if you're not going to hit. Worst hitting team in the league by far last year, by far. And where did it, where did it go? We had one of the best power plays in hockey. We had one of the most exciting young forward groups to watch in hockey. But when it came down to it, we'll never know how far it could have went, guys, because we didn't get in. We missed by a point, and that should have ignited the team this year. And I tell you what, guys, coming out of the gate in preseason, they sucked. They sucked in preseason. And that, to me, people say preseason doesn't count. No, it doesn't. But it's usually a telltale sign of what you're dealing with, kind of. Kind of. Gives you an idea. And we were bad in preseason, inconsistent, and it's followed right through, guys. We've got to do something, and we've got to make a coaching change now. Because, guys, this is going to get far worse. It's going to get far worse than, than where we're at now, four games under 500. This, this has the potential to go like 18 games under 500 this year, a 64-point season or something. That's what we're looking at if we don't shape up now. And I'll tell you what, if I had it my way, there are certain players that would never see the light of day again on this team. And I'm really getting fed up. I, I, but the main problem is Adams likes people. He likes to... You know, if you go in his office, I'm sure, and have a nice talk with him, your job is safe on the team. It's not right. It's not. But the, the main culprit for me is Granado. He's got to go. Him and his soft system, guys, it's got to go. Okay? So we'll see what happens with Columbus. Because if we lose this game, what do you guys think? Are you really that tolerant of Granado? You want to keep him? Really? I, I, I don't understand fans that think Granado's system is the way to go. I don't get it. I don't get how you think playing non-contact in a contact sport is going to win championships when it's never ever happened in the history of the NHL. Come playoff time. So... Are we going to be the first team in NHL history to go into the playoffs and throw 10 hits a game and win the Stanley Cup? I don't think so. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So we got it. Guys, I think we need to make changes. We have to do it now. I, 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 just, I just don't think they're going to. So where does that leave us as fans? Where does that leave us? Are we going to just roll over and die all year like we did in the Housley year? We're going to have a season like that where we had all this promise. Well, at least there we had the 10-game winning streak. But I'm talking, guys, what about the promise that we had coming into the season? We knew they were supposed to be better than this, and they've gotten so much worse. So much worse. Offensively, they look like they were a flash in a pan last year now. That's what this looks like. I think we need a coach who can get the best out of us, can take a player and yank himself out of himself. The biggest problem the Sabres have right now, they're too into self, guys. That's my belief. They're too wrapped in themselves. And to, in order to become a better team, they got to come out of themselves, especially on the ice. And just let it let it flow, let it happen. And I think we need a coach that's going to teach us every facet of the game. And guys, as much as Tortorella gets criticized, look what he's done with the Philadelphia Flyers, who are not as talented, not even close to as talented as the Sabers are. And look at them, and look at us. And you tell me coaching's not a big reason why those two franchises look the way they do right now. You're lying to yourself then. We need to make a coaching change. I guess that's the moral of this video. I'm leaving it there. Guys, I'll try to be around for the post game. I probably will be around for the post game. I don't think I'll be around to see the game. I just don't. It's a five o'clock game. Ah, my, my day's tight, so 
I'll leave it there, guys. I've blabbed enough. I've ranted enough. See you in the post game. I hope tonight. Talking about a win. But I have my doubts. And I'll tell you why, guys. Because we have not been five games under 500 once all year. Is this the day that happens? In a most embarrassing fashion possibly ever. The team that just hammered us at home beats us again at home a few weeks later. See you tonight.